Hello students, I am Imani Sharma, your UGC Net Educator. In this new YouTube video, we are going to move forward and we are going to talk about the course that we are going to start from the 10th of July, which is totally and totally related to your Paper 1 Teaching and Research Aptitude, UGC Net, right? So this video will be dealing with the entire course introduction, the units that I will be dealing particularly in the classroom, right? And how will we be moving forward with whatever units? So through the course of this video, I will try to first explain you what is UGC net? We all should be knowing a little bit or a brief about that very particular course, right? And then moving forward, we'll see that what are the different units that the, there are four units that I'll be dealing with and how their syllabus is given on the UGC NTA website and how I will in my classroom be moving forward with the syllabus, which is more descriptive than the one which has been provided to us by the NTA or UGC net website. So without Without any further ado, let's just see in here that first of all, what is UGC net? That it is a qualifying or an eligibility examination for you to become an assistant professor, of course, as a lecturer, or if you want to apply for PhD. Correct. So I hope this thing is clear. We are all clear with this very particular thing. Now there are two papers which are there in the three hour shift. So certain examinations, they do happen in two shifts, certain examination based on the number of, you know, students who are appearing for that very particular examination. They are in one shift or two shift based on the number of students as I already told you. So the paper is held in two ways, right? So you will be having 150 questions out of which we'll have 50 questions for paper one, correct? And for paper two, we'll have 100 questions. Now again, moving forward, 50 questions for paper one. What are the 10 different units that we are going to deal with? The ta topic of interest is that we deal or we know this paper one as teaching and research aptitude. Whereas paper two is based on your master's degree. And of course, the subject that you have done your master's in along with the minimum eligibility criteria of 55 percentage of marks without rounding them off when you have completed your master's. So of course, you need to know this particular thing that for UGC net examination, you'll have to have 55 percent minimum which you have scored in your master's. Now, 100 questions here. Of course, subject specificity is here. Paper 1, common for all. The syllabus is common for all. Paper is not common for all, of course. Now, 150 questions in totality with 2 marks each. And this is conducted in CBT mode. That is computer-based test mode. And, of course, this is objective or MCQ type, which means that you will be having four options there, A, B, C, D, and of course, you will be answering them according to your knowledge, right? Now, there is no negative marking, which is a plus point, of course, but we will also be knowing this very particular thing that we need to work a little bit more smartly when it comes to this very thing as well. Why do I say that? Because with the accuracy, your percentile in UGC is measured. So we do not want to answer certain questions which we do not really know the answer to. We can make an educated or a wild guess there. But of course, that should be educated that you know that this could be the answer. Which question you do not know totally the answer of, you should skip that. Even if there is no negative marking, correct? So that way we should be working like that. Now our course which is based on paper one teaching and research aptitude going to start from the 10th of July. What are the highlights of the course? What are we offering in here in the Drishti, right? Learning application. We are offering you live classes. So every day particularly classes will be held live. Of course, you will be live streaming that very particular thing on the Drishti learning app, of course. When you get registered, you will get access to that very particular thing. Then we'll be having 
doubt clearing session so that my students do not feel that their curiosity has not been fed right so i want you all to be a little curious have your doubts with yourself and when we have doubt clearing sessions which will be held at regular intervals i will for sure try my level best to answer all your queries now tips and tricks will be there which will be related to you doing your elimination methods how we can make educated guesses how we can do and solve certain questions which are there with a little bit of more smartness special emphasis will be put on the current affairs mostly the current affairs related to higher education unit and of course the people development environment unit they are there but of course my unit is that i will be teaching is higher education so the current affairs which are related to higher education if there is any new mooc course which is there any new scheme which is launched so on and so forth related to the higher education paradigm we we will be talking about that because we want to be and keep ourselves in check of the recent trends and current affairs which are moving so and forth then repeated questions and pyqs which are related and we can see which are the important topics and what are the repeated questions amongst those very important topics with a special and putting more emphasis on the previous year questions so we need to be knowing these very particular things and i would want you all to help me be the one you will be you know having your clear of the examination correct then moving forward we have 10 units in here unit 1 2 that is teaching and research aptitude is the total name of the paper 1 we have 1 as teaching aptitude 2 research aptitude third is comprehension fourth is communication fifth is mathematical reasoning and aptitude and sixth logical reasoning seventh is di data interpretation eighth is ict information and communication technology people development environment is the ninth unit and the tenth one being the higher education this is the you know way the unit has been described in the syllabus which is you know uh, on the website of nta correct so of course roughly the weightage uh, is you know five questions roughly five questions from each unit are asked that could vary from one unit a little bit right so that makes 50 questions because we have 10 units in here so first unit that i have the screenshot here is of the syllabus of research aptitude uploaded on the ugc net nta website so we'll be dealing with here in that we they have asked us that we should know what is research what are the meaning what are the types what are the characteristics of research along with the post is positivism and positivistic approach correct we also should be able that is what they are saying or asking us to do that method what are the different methods of research experimental descriptive historical what is the differentiation between qualitative and quantitative methods correct steps of research really important in time and again questions related to or you know arranging them in a sequential or a chronological manner has been asked thesis and article writing with special emphasis on formats and styles of referencing i will be dealing with that you need not worry then we have application of ict in research how do we use ict in the field of research when it comes to data collection when it comes to data analysis when it comes to checking certain thing that we have written down as a research paper to check it for the plagiarism hmm? then we have ethics we know ethics in general terms right we all do but how ethical how we should make our research ethical what are the different types of ethics which should be there so we all need to be aware of these very particular things then we have unit 3 that is comprehension where a passage of text will be given so you will be provided with the passage right having five questions which you will be answering of course and that will be based on these questions will be based on the passage so of course i will be showing you certain tips and tricks as in how to go about with doing the comprehension etc correct and of course then we have another unit ict unit number 8 where we are supposed to know general abbreviations of ict what is wifi what is wan what is lan man pan etc right what do we mean by gif 
and the terminology which is there. What is firewall? What is a router? What are topologies? What do we really mean by protocols which are there? Hmm? Then we have basics of internet. What are the different types of network devices? Intranet. What is intranet? Questions are really asked from this very particular thing. Then email. What is the format of the email? audio and video conferencing which is really easy of course as a topic then digital initiatives in higher education right and ICT and governance how ICT is helping governing uh, you know government of India as well to work with the initiatives of portals such as mygovernment.in correct now higher education may they have asked us to be aware of the institutions of higher learning and education in ancient India. So we'll be dealing with the Vedic education system. How the evolution of higher learning took place from the ancient times to the modern ones along with the post-independence India we will be knowing about and we should be knowing about the pre and the post-independence commissions which were there. Hmm? Oriental, conventional and non-conventional learning. What is the traditional way of learning? How do we learn things in the traditional manner? Apart from that, how do we learn things in a non-conventional way? We will be talking about that as well. Professional, technical, skill-based education. There are certain frameworks such as NSQF, right? National Skills Qualification Framework. We have certain schemes like Skill India. How and what are they? Certain courses which are professional, which are vocational, job oriented, certain courses which are technical, you know that, how they are, what they are and how do they work. Hmm? Value education and environmental education, which is not paid that much heed to, we will be talking about how now the Ministry of Education has also asked, of course, to inculcate certain courses which are related to establishing the values in students and, of course, the environmental education that how it is there as at least one or two semester course to be there in your bachelor's, etc. Policies, governance and administration, to be honest, there are rarely now questions asked from this very particular point, this very particular topic, but we will not be missing it, of course. We will be dealing with the constitution of India, how and from where it has been derived. Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, we also will be talking about other things such as the powers of the president, prime minister, vice president, how they all are elected, what is the eligibility criteria, correct? So this was in the previous three or four slides I tried to show that what was there on the UGC net website but now I will be telling you how will I be moving forward and taking you all along on the journey of cracking UGC net JRF correct so of course first we will be dealing with research aptitude where we'll be talking about the definition how and why do we call it research what is the etymology of this particular word right what is the definition meaning the introduction what motivates people to get enrolled in a course which is related to research? Why do they feel like they want to research a certain topic, right? And a certain, you know, objectives and characteristics. Characteristics like we have objectivity. We have reliability, right? We have validity. We have the researches, cyclical, correct, so on and so forth. We have questions related to research, you know, what is reliability and validity and how they are different from one another and questions related to statement based questions related from these very particular characteristics have been asked. So we will be dealing with all these characteristics which make a work, a research work, right, like just a work of art. <clears throat> then we'll be dealing with epistemology. What is the study of knowledge and how do we really know things? What are the different sources and ways of knowing things? And of course, the different types of research paradigms such as empiricism, where we learn through our experiences. Rationalism, where we talk about, we think with our reason, our rational mind, right? Constructivism, how certain thoughts are created or constructed and this is mostly used in the teaching learning process. <clears throat> 
positivism and post positivism how one is related to science the other is related to science and common sense and how they are different from one another yet they are somewhere or the other there is some characteristic which is similar to them then post modernism which is somewhere or the other related to post positivism with its characteristics transformative and vashtihan research paradigm so all the research paradigms we are going to cover in here along with <coughs> the types of attitudinal and statistical scales you would have seen in the question paper questions related to likert scale and these are the attitudinal scales that i'm talking about in here you would have seen questions like on likert scale mostly likert scale they do ask thurston right gutman scale all of them and of course when it comes to the statistical scales part you would have seen certain questions which are based on let's just say nominal ordinal interval and ratio scale they ask questions like what and how do we arrange these ones what are the characteristics of these scales so in match the following these questions are asked based on the statistical scales you would have i sure i am sure that you would have if you would have done the previous years analysis you would have seen questions related to this very particular thing then we have types of variables variables like independent variable dependent variable extraneous variable confounding and why do we call a confounding variable like that what is the meaning of confounding in here when used in research and independent and dependent really easy seem really easy but what is the meaning here so this unit is most daunting according to the students but it is trust me really easier then we have probability and non probability sampling techniques which are two categories of how we collect samples from the population which is there how we are moving forward with it and they have their subtypes so worry not we will be dealing here in the probability with acronyms or mnemonics correct then we have types of biases sometimes while conducting a research a researcher is somewhere or the other intentionally or unintentionally biased towards his design maybe the measurement the sampling bias what are the different types of biases we'll be talking about them as well along with the hypothesis and types of errors null hypothesis why it is called null hypothesis and there is an alternative hypothesis as well what are the different names of alternative hypothesis if you see certain other thing in the examination you know that we have another name for alternative hypothesis as well types of errors like alpha and beta errors and what is the level of significance how much error can you make in your research right all the percentages etc we'll be talking about and we'll be seeing alpha and beta errors how they are different from one another moving forward we have types of research where we will be moving from forward from basic fundamental pure research to analytical descriptive historical right ex post facto action research experimental research and when i talk about experimental research in here we will be talking about two types of designs one being the true experiment the other being the quasi experiment design correct what makes a true experiment what are the characteristics of an experiment being the true one and the quasi one you just like me as i feared this very particular word i did not know the meaning of but then i studied this is really easy trust me so we will be de dealing with that thing as well making the things easier what are the subtypes which are there when it comes to you know the types which are under the experimental research methods of research what are the correct application of ict how there is a different you know all together we use ict in small small things maybe to check our grammar correct maybe to collect data maybe to analyze data as well using the excel sheets correct what are the different phases in data collection how do we analyze those things steps of research already told you you are asked question from in here 
research presentation which will be including symposium, colloquium. What do we mean by a meeting? What do we mean by a seminar, a webinar? All these things in here and the research schemes under Ministry of Education. What are the research schemes? Correct? And of course, the ethics we talked about, how morally we should be correct while conducting research as well. How we should be honest, we should be maintaining confidentiality of the participants who do not want their information to be disclosed outside, right? How we should be maintaining objectivity, so on and so forth. Impact factors, how we will be dealing with that, what is an impact factor of a journal? How, if I want to get my paper published, where and how to find the impact factor of a journal along with the differentiation between dissertation and thesis in India with the formats and styles of referencing talking about MLA, APA and Chicago referencing style. We will be talking about them according to the recent editions which have been there. Then peer review. Now when you write your research paper, article or journal, anything or everything like that, you first want to get it published of course and you, when, when you send it to a particular journal, they are the ones who will first be reviewing it by a team. So the team, the experts who are dealing with or reading your research paper, accepting or rejecting it, will be coming under peer review. Then how to write a research proposal, what are the different paths, how to go about with it. Now when I talk about the entire unit of research aptitude, you should keep this very thing in mind that this particular unit is not and not just about net, but also preparing you for the basics of your PhD, where your supervisor, why do they say that we want net JRF qualified candidates? Because these candidates who would have prepared for NET will be the ones who will be knowing these very things a little bit, the basics if not much because your supervisor also will be telling you much and more about in detail in certain things, of certain things of course and you will be at least aware of the basics so that you can, you know, of course understand what and where they are coming from. So make and keep this a habit that you are doing it this just not for your, you know, net key clarity ke liye and clear the net examination, be the one who has qualified it, but also because you want to do your PhD and you should not be embarrassed while sitting in an interview knowing, not knowing that what do we really mean by historical research or experimental research, correct? Because that is really important in a whole big lot of picture. Then, we have another unit, ICT, where we are first of all going to get introduced to the unit. We are going to know what is the differentiation between ICT and IT, how they are different from one another, what are the uses of ICT, components, advantages, weaknesses, characteristics, what makes ICT itself, right? Then the types of learning where we are going to talk about blended learning, we are going to talk about distance learning, e-learning, conventional learning, how we can use different instructional, you know, units as well to learn certain things. We are going to talk about computers. We are not going to miss on any and other, every minute detail. We are going to do it, correct? The definition simple things, generations and types of computers, which type of computer or which generation of computer use transistors, vacuum tubes, VLSI etc and what are the different types of languages which were used in there. Peripherals of computer where we will be talking about the input, output and storage devices. Hmm? Then we have components of computer, etc. Other things which are related, differentiation between hardware and software which also has been covered in the concept series. Programming languages and language processors like assembler, compiler and interpreter. How they are different and how they are similar to one another. Hmm? Then, of course, we are also going to talk about internet, its history. Was it known as ARPANET? We will be talking about that. How it works, what are the uses of internet, the advantages, disadvantages, etc. IOT, that is Internet of Things. And, of course, IOE, that is Internet of everything why and how they are different 
what is the meaning of ioe and iot correct lan man van intranet and extranet how these two are used under the sphere of internet how they are having the characteristics of internet yet they are different from one another network topologies like bus topology mesh topology star topology ring topology etc so different types of topologies what is the topology that how the computers are connected using certain cables hubs switches etc network devices what do we have in network devices we are going to talk about router we are going to talk about modem what is a hub you know what is a hub what is a switch etc so we will be talking about these network devices internet connection options how we have broadband connection options wireless wired connection options wifi etc and terms totally related to internet as in what is a firewall what is a search engine or web browser email we will be talking about the formatting of an email what does different field mean what are the different different abbreviations which are used in email how to attach a file etc what is cc and what is the differentiation between cc and bcc the blind carbon copy and the carbon copy and of course even these my new details you should be knowing that these are the abbreviations which are related to internet the terms etc so we'll be knowing the full forms we'll be doing the full forms as well web 1.0 to 3.0 and to see that how the web has developed over years audio video conferencing easy file extensions related to image related to audio video etc we'll be talking about the documents extensions and e-commerce where we'll be dealing about and e-governance where we will be talking about the different models b2b c2c etc correct digital initiatives in higher education and e governance and conversions in ict trust me when it comes to conversion students are like what is this binary to decimal and decimal to binary but it is a certain thing which you might be you know afraid of but not with or in the classes because of course the basics will be taught and then of course we will also be dealing with the tips and tricks that i already asked you and you know told you in the first slide that i'll be giving you certain tips and tricks to solve these binary octal hexadecimal decimal questions in detail right and of course in small small and little time no less time then we have higher education the unit of higher education again is first of all introduction of course will be given an evolution of higher education system in india there again we will be moving to the ancient education where we are going to talk about the education system during the vedic age where we are going to talk about what we are going to talk about the gurukul system we are going to talk about the four stages of life what are those four stages of life they are known as four ashrams right starting from what starting from brahmacharya and ending with sanyas what are the four ashrams if there are any ceremonies which were there before a student was admitted to a gurukul what were they we'll be talking about that right viharas and universities which gained prominence during the times of the buddhist or buddhism women education was it prominently there do we have any women scholars during the ancient times buddhist and jain education system how and what were their teachings correct what how their teachers used to teach then muslim education talking about maktabas and madrasas how they are different from one another in the case that one is of primary education the other one is for the secondary you know other type of education pre independence indian commissions where we are going to talk about macaulay's minute how in the year 1835 he said that i want we want to build a class of indians by blood and color but english by taste and opinions what was the whole thinking of these britishers thinking that yes we want to civilize the entire country of india Hmm? how the colonialism and of course we are not just talking about that in negative stance but of course there was some kind of hidden motive there 
but we are talking we are also going to talk about how they brought forth certain changes in the education system so pre independence commission along with anglicist orientalist controversy apart from that post independence indian commissions where we have kothari commission we have sharma committee we have yashpal committee where we have different different bhakt vatsalam committee correct different different types of committees which came after india got it got its independence correct and then national education policy 2020 which was launched in of course the year 2020 who drafted it hmm? and of course moving forward what are what are the various features if certain things have been adopted by different countries and what are the salient features basically of this national education policy schemes related to ncf national curriculum framework which is again and again revised every year sarva shiksha abhiyan right to education rosa and rmsa rosa is rashtriya uchchatar shiksha abhiyan and rmsa is rashtriya madhyamik shiksha abhiyan correct so how these schemes have been launched there and higher education apex level bodies like ugc correct like ugc aicte bar council of india bca ha huh? then we have types of universities where we have public universities we have private universities we have state universities etc we have deemed to be universities non conventional environment and vocational education where we and value education of course where we are going to talk about how it is different from one another yet important when we are you know teaching it somewhere and the students are gaining it from the educational sphere that they are getting their education from reports nsqf already gave you the example of this this is related to the skill, skills qualification framework national skills qualification framework ash report nirf ranking where they give ranking to the colleges the universities of india the colleges which are best for law dentistry so on and so forth we are going to deal with them in detail right nat grading nba ab and arya report so we are going to deal with all these reports with the help of the recent data so that you do not feel like of course we are teaching you the previous data correct then government schemes for higher education and polity and governance already told you rare questions are asked from polity and governance but we will not be leaving it coming back to the government schemes for higher education one thing that of note i want to tell you all is that the schemes which come under the higher education sphere the schemes which are related to research and icit they all are interrelated because of course if anything you are doing your research under one particular scheme that scheme will be using icit of course hence it is related to the unit of icit and for more you know moving forward it comes under the higher education paradigm because you are doing your research in the higher education field correct so these three things even certain schemes will be you know repeated from one unit to the other so we'll be working smartly in there correct then we have again i have the entire overview of the course which is going to we gave you how i will be moving forward with the classroom series which is supposed to the course in you know which is going to start from the 10th of july where we will be dealing and of course teaching you all through the live classes and clearing your doubts in the doubt sessions which are going to be conducted at regular intervals moreover special emphasis on current affairs which according to my unit that i have is of higher education hmm? repeated questions and pyqs based on the important topics and the recent trends as in we will be analyzing the pyqs and seeing that how and what kind of questions are they asking so that we are more and more comprehensively and smartly prepared for the upcoming ugc net 2023 december 2023 cycle so this was all which i was supposed to tell you which was related to my teaching units when the course is going to start from the 10th of july for more information which is related to the course if you have any questions you can click on the link which is provided in the description below and of course you will be redirected to a page where your questions will be answered i will see you again until and unless in another video we all will be studying together and i hope you all enroll for the course in the upcoming time thank you so much and have a good day bye bye